You're listening to the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, your escape to reality. Hello and welcome to the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Today is Wednesday, November 28th, 2007, and this is your host, Stephen Novella, president of the New England Skeptical Society. Joining me this evening are Bob Novella. Hey, everybody. Rebecca Watson. Hello, everyone. Jay Novella. Hey, guys. And Evan Bernstein. Good evening, everybody. Hey, How is everyone tonight? Good, Steve. Couldn't Quite be fine. Better. Very good, but apparently you're not good, Steve. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that a bit later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jay's, re- Jay's referring to a recent Skeptico podcast, which talks about the Skeptics Guide specifically. And we'll be getting Ooh. that into the beginning of the email section of our show. But first, let's do some news items. Several of our listeners referred us to this uh, New York Times editorial by Paul Davies, this past Saturday's edition of the New York Times, in which he claims that science is based upon faith. Uh, have you guys had a chance to read this? Yep. Yes. So this is a uh, this is a claim that we hear frequently. Davis, for example, writes, The problem with this neat separation into non-overlapping magisteria, as Stephen Jay Gould described, science and religion, is that science has its own faith-based belief system. All science proceeds on the assumption that nature is ordered in a rational and intelligible way. You couldn't be a scientist if you thought the universe was a meaningless jumble of odds and ends, haphazardly juxtaposed. When physicists probe to a deeper level of subatomic structure or astronomers extend the reach of their instruments, they expect to encounter additional elegant mathematical order. And so far, this faith has been justified. So, (laughs) you know, again, this is a claim that we hear frequently, and I think that Davies is making the really common mistake of confusing methodological naturalism with philosophical naturalism. What he's saying is that science assumes that the laws of the universe are stable and that they make sense. And he says that science requires faith in that. And that is absolutely not correct. That is a complete misunderstanding of science. Science doesn't really require anything because science is just a system of uh, of methodology. It assumes methodological naturalism, the idea that effects have causes, that that the system internally sort of functions together and makes sense, the system meaning nature, because it has to assume that. It it takes that as a, a premise only because the methods of science only work within that framework. So it's actually not an assumption about reality. It's not faith in any particular metaphysical ultimate reality. It's just saying these are the methods that that work and therefore these are the methods that science is going to use because it's the only it's the only ones in which you can proceed with empirical, you know, hypothesis testing. It actually is agnostic towards the ultimate metaphysical realities of the universe. So his entire premise is false. So, Steve, would you say that it's wrong? This, the following statement is wrong. I have faith in the scientific method. Well, it depends on what you mean by, by that. I think we use the term faith differently. If that means that it has worked so far, and therefore I think it's highly probable it will continue to work in the future, then I think that that's a legitimate statement. But if you're saying you believe something as a choice— without justification, then I, th- I think that, that it doesn't apply. The term faith doesn't apply. Okay. that that Because I, I say that. I say I have faith in the scientific method because yeah. from my perspective, I'm saying that I'm banking on the proof upon proof that science has delivered over over the years. Right. So, you know, we, we hear this a lot from the intelligent design crowd, uh, and I'm sure that they love these kind of editorials because this is... This is their mantra, the notion that you have to have faith in, the, in, in science or faith in evolution, and that uh, they, they've been complaining endlessly. And this is, you know, Philip Johnson, who basically started in the intelligent design movement. This was his core premise, was that science is, should not be based upon naturalism, on the assumption of naturalism, because that's rigging the game. It's rigging the game against supernatural or spiritual explanations. And they're, they're, that's, they're continuing to make that case. In fact, in preparation for our show tonight, I was listening to an episode of Skeptico, the podcast Skeptico from a few episodes ago where he interviewed an intelligent design proponent. And that's what it was all about. It was all about scientists are assuming 
philosophical naturalism and they're not go they're not following the evidence where it goes they're on, they're restricting their inquiry to naturalistic explanations and that that's not fair that's rigging the game what what that misses is that that methodological naturalism is not a choice it's a necessity we're not limiting the answers that we're willing to consider to the ones that fit our paradigm we're limiting the questions to ones that can be answered scientifically. If you can't formulate your hypothesis in a way that it is that it can be tested, it can be falsified, then it doesn't meet the minimum criteria for being considered as science. That they totally do not get that at all. And that's true at on the spiritual end, like the intelligent design proponents, and it's true on the new age end, like you know, Alex from Skeptico, because they were in complete agreement on this point, that skeptics and scientists are feeding into their own assumption of, of uh, philosophical naturalism, and it's completely untrue. What I don't understand is, you know, going back to what Carl Sagan said so eloquently, is that science delivers the goods. I mean, mm-hmm. science in and of itself is a system that has been proven over and over and over again to work. That's a good point, Jay, and I often refer to that as the meta-experiment of science. If methodological naturalism didn't work because our universe was hopelessly not rational or not not naturalistic... A-causal. It was a-causal or retro-causal, or the rules, the laws of the universe changed frequently or could be suspended at random or by the whim of some some being if this if these things were true or if you know if our universe were part of a of a larger universe that we could not access but that influenced our universe whatever if any of those situations were true then science wouldn't work very well you know we would be constantly running up against enduring anomalies that we could never resolve we couldn't make sense out of things that we thought were well established would be overturned chaotically and at random. And that's just not the case. Science has been working quite well over the past few hundred years, slowly, methodically building an ever-improving model that is very, very powerful in its ability to predict the future, to predict what's going to happen. That is the only criterion by which science is, is, is really judged. You know, how well does it predict the outcome of future observations? That And that doesn't prove philosophical naturalism, just like you can't really prove anything in science, right? Nothing is proven metaphysically in science. All we could say is that so far all the evidence is pointing in that direction. 